Hi, I'm glad you're back. Today we're going to talk about socks. And I don't want this to be some silly little show about, you know, a little item like socks that you don't really consider. I'm hoping that I can draw you in and have you think about this both functional utilitarian item and also an item that allows you to express your own style. So we'll think about your own relationship with the simple sock. Maybe you remember when you were a little kid and how socks really bothered you. Maybe you were tactile sensitive and you're always trying to get your socks correct and ah, you couldn't go you know, to school that day unless they felt right. This is a lot of the experiences I see with little kids. And then you have the childhood experience of Christmas and getting the sock gift and feeling the disappointment, you know, why couldn't it be cash? Why couldn't it be something fun? Why did I once again get socks? I see this again and again. So you start off with this kind of strange relationship with your socks. And then as you get older and you maybe leave school and you're on your own at university or doing your own path in life, suddenly you wish someone would buy you socks because you can never find them. They're straight about. You know, they get damaged, you lose them, you forget them, you're hoping for the sock gift. So your sock relationship becomes a little bit different, a little more positive. And then one day you decide that you want to try the world of suits. And today it's a decision. You know, you're not just automatically required to wear a suit like it was a few generations ago, one generation ago even. You choose to enter this sartorial life. And of course, part of the whole ensemble that you're going to, to wear will include obviously socks. I've heard more than one sartorial expert say that socks are probably the most underrated accessory of the entire accessory gamut. So let's jump in to what you can do when you choose your socks. Going back to those memories, Maybe you recall when your father or your grandfather wore those fuzzy brown or black socks and the whole, the drawers were filled with just those socks. And maybe that's your experience with socks. But if you look at the menswear um, recommendations, say like 10 or 15 years ago, there are two things that you would hear over and over again. One was match your socks with your trousers and the other was match your socks with your shoes. And so everyone trying to be the good boys um, and people that they were would try to technically match the sock with the trouser or match the sock with the shoe. And there was the great debate, do you match your socks with your trousers or your shoes? Okay, this becomes a little bit silly, I, I admit. But you know, the really strategic, hardcore technical guys, they wanted to know. And we've eventually evolved into a more relaxed sartorial environment. Again, maybe because we could choose to wear a suit. We didn't have to wear a suit. So, and in this environment, we became a little more experimental, a little more free, a little more adventurous, a little more with a desire to express a style. Now, why would you be interested in experimenting with socks? Okay, we've already said you can express your style, but also it's low risk. It's not going to cost you much money. The embarrassment factor is really low because if you go wrong, you can always stash another pair somewhere in a drawer and change your socks. Um, and also, I think the main thing is because it's going to help you discover what you really like. And when you know what you like with a simple um, sock, which involves fabric and designs, then you can translate that into some of the suiting that you're wearing. So there's a lot of good reason to stay with me here and see, go on your own path of discovery. Okay, so I hope I've convinced you to give the sock adventure a try. If you're hesitant, think about Fred Astaire. This is the best example I can share with you about a man who was ultra conservative, had this almost haute couture level of presenting himself in suits. But he said, when it comes to socks, I give myself some leeway. So let's give this attitude a try. One thing I will say, if you, if you do buy socks, make sure they're over the calf because when you cross your legs, you don't want to show your leg. That's not elegant at all. And consider the material that you like. Do you like cotton? Do you like wool? Do you like cashmere? Do you like a silk blend? Find the material that you like and then stick with that for a little while until you, while you go on your sock journey.
Okay, the next thing that you want to do when you forget about the sock matching the shoe or the trouser matching the sock is go to a different color. And we're, we're going up a ladder here of things that you can do with experimentation. So I suggest you go to a different solid color. For example, try a burgundy or a green. Any other color besides black and blue and brown and gray. A few brands that you may want to consider are Maison Set Rouge, that's who you, Hugo and I use a lot, and Bracciani, Gallo, there's a, there's a whole host of nice sock brands that you may want to consider. As we go up the ladder of trying different things with your socks, we covered wearing burgundy and green. The next step is looking at a very special kind of sock. It's called the shadow rib sock. Basically, it's a sock with, can be the same color, with one color shadowed darker and the next color a little lighter. And it's just alternating stripes. Very subtle expression, but something that can make you feel really good when it comes to accessorizing your entire ensemble. When you do try these shadow rib socks, if you find that it's a little bit too much for you, I suggest that you change your shoe to a patinaed shoe. What is a patinaed shoe? It's when you dye bleach and tone tent the shoe to make it look like it's had some natural wear over the years. There are some patina specialists that actually work on shoes to give them this impression that the shoe has a little bit of a worn look. And when you combine socks, you, if you start out with a shoe with a patina, you're going to find out that the patterns blend and flow much better. So this is just a little tip for you to try along the way. I'm going to put on my glasses because soon I'm going to read you something that I think you're going to find very interesting. So moving on to the next step. The next step is to try vintage patterns. This is probably the safest wild thing that you're going to be able to do. A vintage pattern is usually simply a solid sock with a very fine, for example, diamond lined pattern running down the side or very gentle specks on the shoe, something that reminds you of times past. And if you're this type of person who enjoys vintage items, once you put on these vintage socks, I think you're going to like the vibe that it brings. I think it's going to say something about yourself. Now we're moving up the ladder to the sixth type of sock for you to consider. The thing that I'm going to say sounds very common to you. It's checks. Try checks on your socks, but also in the same family of checks, is the hound's tooth pattern. And the hound's tooth is just a Scottish geometric block pattern with jagged teeth. I'm sure you're very familiar with it. It's a, a very traditional pattern and it will give you that same checked feeling, but also give a wink to the sartorial type of life. This is sticking to the classics. You haven't been very adventurous so far, but as you move up the ladder, let's see if you feel like you're pushing yourself a little bit further and maybe discovering some things about what you like and you don't like. The next area will be the Argyle sock. Now this is more like of an Ivy League type of look. This is also a 17th century tartan pattern. It's um, maybe the ultimate prep play and it also makes you play down the formality of your outfit possibly putting others at ease if you're meeting with someone who really doesn't appreciate your suited look and it gives the impression of approachability so the argyle sock is a really nice stepping stone to going to more daring socks so let's keep going up the ladder the next thing and one of the more interesting type of socks you want to try is the pastel sock now that may sound too feminine to you, but it's really not feminine at all. And actually there's a very good story behind the pastel sock that you might find interesting and you might find appeals to you. In this situation, I'm gonna pull out my notes and read to you a little story about specifically the blue pastel sock. The original blue stockings were inferior socks. We're speaking about women right now, but it also applies to men. They were made up of undyed grayish worsted yarn, yarn and worn as common everyday socks. They received a famous promotion in 1756 when Benjamin Stillingfleet received a message from the educated salon hostess Elizabeth Vesey. Don't mind dress, come in your blue stockings she replied to his declined invitation to attend her event on the basis of not owning enough fine clothing. Blue stockings, 
was quickly adopted to describe the new society of intellectuals who stood less upon formality and gender roles and more upon the sharing of ideas. Two centuries earlier, mention is made of Mary, Queen of Scots, wearing blue stockings to her execution. Perhaps this was in defiance of the known preference for white stockings by Elizabeth I, who signed Mary's death warrant. So there's, there's a few stories about these blue stockings, and I think that if you are that type of personality, the thinker, the cerebral man, the one who wants to have an intellectual flair, why not give a wink to history and try the light blue socks? I, I know that I've seen several people like uh, Fred Astaire who loved these pastel socks. And also, you go, what's the name of Joseph? Uh, Ignatius Joseph, who wears, goes to Pitti every year when it was actually occurring in person. And it's one of his trademarks, too, to wear the light blue socks. It's something that leaves a nice impression. And I'll show you a B-roll because I happen to be wearing the light blue socks right now. Continuing down or up the sartorial ladder, we're going to approach a type of sock that I'm sure you're familiar with, but I'm not sure if you've tried yet. It's the bright socks, those vibrant socks, those socks where people are not trying to blend with their trousers and shoes, that's for certain. And the one color we're gonna look at first, which has been a recent discovery for Hugo and myself, is the purple socks. The reason that we notice that this purple color is very interesting is because so many commentators during this crazy thing that was going on in politics in America over and over again were wearing purple ties with their navy blue suits. And it was so pervasive that we, we sat up and took notice. And we recall just over New Year's Eve, we also had a guest here who was wearing a purple bow tie with a blue suit and it was amazing. it looked fantastic so we said why not if you're going on the bright sock journey why don't you focus on wearing your purple socks with navy blue and see if it has the same effect i think it's a really good color to start out with because as you're going to see next you can really go far with the bright colors the next color we're going to focus on which is also a bright stock sock color, and this happens to be around 10th in your, on the ladder of wearing socks, are the bright red signature socks. Um, you probably, if you're in the sartorial world, world at all, have seen a lot of guys going with the bright red socks. The nice thing about having a signature sock, like the bright red sock, is you can buy like 20 pairs and never get confused or lose the other pair of socks because everything's going to match. You know, Tom Wolfe, if you recall, he uh, was known to wear white suits. Wore white suits constantly. Didn't matter which season it was. You know, if it was after Labor Day, he didn't care. That was his signature. So if you want a signature, this is one thing that some gentlemen want to do is try the bright red sock as a signature item. People get used to seeing you wearing those socks. It becomes part of who you are. Continuing up the ladder of trying different socks. We're going to look at something very daring, and I'm wondering how many of you are willing to try it. It's the horizontal stripe sock. Now, this also, like the blue pastel sock, has quite an interesting history. The horizontal stripe sock, maybe you know. What, what do you think of when you think of a horizontal stripe? If any of you are in athletics, you may think of the athletic sock, because indeed the horizontal stripe, top stripe socks, or what was introduced to the market to give the idea of wearing the horizontal stripe. Um, it started with the same color with different shades on the athletic sock. And then eventually, the North Carolina Tar Heels basketball team in 1911 decided to drop those horizontal socks a little bit lower. And this is one step in history that gave people the idea to drop the, the horizontal stripes down further on the sock. And eventually, even the sartorial world started wearing these horizontal striped socks. And I think it's a, week, a wink to sportiness, a wink to not only being playful, but, but literally adding that sporty flair to bring the whole ensemble into a sporty, sportiness type of vibe. 
if you want to go for this, you may have to be more of like the dandy-esque type of personality because you have to understand pattern combining, texture combining, and whether you have the eye to know whether you can pull this off or not. Next step up the sock ladder is the motif. Now this can get a little cheesy. You all know the people who like to wear cartoon characters on their tie. Not knocking it. Some people can do it. Even the um, Albert Thurston suspenders, which is a highly respectable suspender company. They have the suspenders with penguins, you know, as their motif. Um, you can go crazy with the socks. You've seen people wear the crazy Christmas socks. But I'm saying it doesn't have to be crazy. If you do it right, you can actually express your personality. Fred Astaire wore the motif sock, and I stick with Fred because I like this consistency. Um, he wore the repeating pattern of stars on his socks, and this was a pretty successful look. It didn't look ridiculous. So if, you, if you're that playful type, it's going to say this about you, that you enjoy humor, you enjoy playfulness, but if you can do it right, you can come across as elegant instead of ridiculous. So be careful here, but if you're motivated to do it, why not? Continuing up the more daring ladder rungs, we're going to move to the white socks. You know, the white socks can maybe be perceived as an assault on humanity by some of you, like the most disgusting thing a person can do. And it was just, I believe in 19, um, yeah, 1996, Time Magazine did a big article on Jane, Jean Kelly, white socks and loafers. And they re-examined this look of the white socks. And you know, if you go back in time, there were many different points of time where very stylish people wore white socks with their clothes. We're not talking about just Jean Kelly, who Hugo respects very much. We're talking about people like Elvis Presley, who was quite elegant, and Michael Jackson. And uh, there's another one. There's another person. Paul Newman was another one that wore the white socks. Um, in 2017, there was an article in, by Esquire. It was called The Unlikely Return of the white sock. Now this was what, three and a half years ago? And so we're already seeing in about 2016, people in our sartorial community experimenting with wearing white socks with their suits, usually with loafers. And we were a little shocked at first. 2017, Esquire's writing about this. Here we are in 2000, uh, 2021, and we're seeing men almost in every country putting their Instagram pictures up with their white socks. So it takes a little bit of while, you know, to warm up to something new in this day and time, but we, we're seeing this now. And isn't it interesting? Because we think about classic style not really being about fashion. And in this sense, I believe that the white socks, you know, is a little bit of a fashion statement. But sometimes you're going to see a little overlay with this more traditional type of thinking and the play between style and fashion. So white socks, if you think about it, they can be kind of obnoxious because those big, thick, white athletic socks are kind of, kind of gross to look at. And if you consider you can buy elegant white socks. You might actually change your mind and, and want to give them a try. And I have one um, white sock in particular that I'm going to put up for you to take a look at. It's very elegantly made. Um, the texture is nice. Uh, I don't think you're, anyone's going to see this white sock and be offended. And it's actually a bit off-white. It's not um, stark white like a lot of the white socks that you may have in your mind. The last area that we're going to look at, it's, I believe, the 14th rung on the sock ladder is no socks. Now we're talking about, about a gener uh, uh, 10 years ago, earlier, when we were speaking of the white socks. Well, 10 years ago, when you, if you said no socks with a suit, people would basically want to vomit. They thought that was disgusting. But you know, it comes from the Ivy League era, the resort wear when guys would just throw their loafers on and go out and eventually it seeped into the pity womo look wearing no socks you know with the shoes and giving that sort of like i don't care flair and mainly during the summer i would include because it's not very it's not a happy moment not to have socks on in the winter so this became something that even you go and i do in the summertime so shoe the socks, you can get the little no-show socks and put a 
Band-Aid or some type of a silicone product on the back of your heel so you don't get some type of sore there. But you can try it. I bet you you're going to like it in summer, even if you've cursed it in years past. But that's, again, to add a little bit of sportiness. Try something different. Express yourself in different ways. All of the pictures you've seen today is from That Guy's Shoes on Instagram. Um, we were fortunate enough to be able to use this kind of consistency, and I hope you'll check out his Instagram account. This type of consistency and demonstrating the different socks you can wear. He's probably the most um, experimental person that I can think of in terms of trying different stock types of socks and expressing um, what type of styles are relayed through the socks that he wears. And so this was our great sock adventure. Are you willing to give it a shot? I would love to know. And if you do, which of these, I believe 14 different options would you choose to experiment with? So until next time, we make an appointment with you for the next tutorial talks. And until then, cheers.